Hello, welcome to the Friday, September 27th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from London, England. It took only a couple days for the, the bulletin vulnerability to be targeted by botnets. Bad Packets has an interesting report of a botnet that they observed attacking vulnerable the bulletin instances. What it does is it actually, well, sort of patches the vulnerability in adding a password to the vulnerable eval function so now only the owner of the botnet who knows the password is able to actually take advantage of the vulnerability it's not clear if the password is unique for particular sites or if they're using the same password across all sites which of course would sort of defeat its purpose now that this password has been made public just to reiterate what I said yesterday, if you haven't patched yet or if you patched sort of in the last 24 hours, essentially after the official patch was released, you should assume that your bulletin board has already been compromised. And this is just one example how an attacker could use uh, this vulnerability to essentially add a backdoor. And then we got a security bulletin from Cisco that affects the Model 800 industrial ISR routers and Model 1000 grid routers. Now, these devices are typically uh, used in critical infrastructure, which makes the number of vulnerable devices probably quite small, but of course their location may be critical. The problem here is approach escalation vulnerability. An attacker with guest access could access a VM that only administrative users should have access to, and that then, of course, leads to an elevation of privileges. And a few days ago, I mentioned the critical vulnerability in the cloud native registry Harbor that Palo Alto discovered. Well, Harbor is used in a number of commercial products as well. We now got a security bulletin from VMware addressing this issue in VMware Harbor container registry, as well as in VMware Cloud Foundation. Just as a reminder, this vulnerability allowed an attacker to essentially add arbitrary admin users to Harbor and with that completely compromise systems hosted within Harbor. Unlike with Wi-Fi, it has always been a little bit more tricky to actually sniff Bluetooth. A lot of Bluetooth hardware is more limited and doesn't quite allow to collect arbitrary Bluetooth signals. Well, uh, there are a couple chipsets out there that do allow sniffing, and one of these chipsets, uh, TICC1352 slash CC26X2, now has software to also sniff Bluetooth. Five. The software comes courtesy of the NCC group and is released open source. One nice aspect of uh, this particular chipset is it's quite easy and uh, reasonably inexpensive uh, to obtain, which uh, puts uh, Bluetooth 5 sniffing now in the reach of a hobbyist or a somewhat occasional pen tester. And Microsoft stated that it will be adding more extensions to the blacklist for Outlook Web Access. These extensions do include, for example, Python scripts, also various extensions associated with PowerShell. What this means is that if you are receiving an email with an attachment that uses one of these blacklisted extensions, you will no longer be able to download it using Outlook Web Access. Of course, the reason behind this change is pretty obvious. Python PowerShell scripts are often used by malware. If you have legitimate need to receive attachments that are Python scripts and the like, uh, there is a workaround for you. You can define your own policy that will overwrite these default restrictions and you should still be able, in this case, to download affected files. File types. 
I can see where a system administrator, for example, is exchanging scripts like this uh, with others and uh, then you may want to have access. Of course, you could still use systems like GitHub or such to exchange these files without actually using email attachments. Well, that's it for today. As usual, if you like this podcast, uh, please share it with your friends, uh, leave good comments on podcast sites, iTunes. Uh, it's also available actually via Amazon Alexa's daily news briefing. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.